Mia and Irana, congratulations on season two. Tony and Shelby are one of my favorite on-screen couples. So this is honestly, I'm so excited to chat with the two of you today. I binged all of season one and season two back to back, and I cannot wait for fans to see season two and see the and see the Shoni moments. So I'm so excited to chat with you guys. Congratulations well, to you, first you. of all. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I love the relationship and the friendship that you have with each other and seeing all the support that you guys do with each other on Instagram. And I'm curious, you know, with the characters that you guys are playing, especially like with Shelby, she's like more in denial based on how she was raised. But um, Tony is a little bit more like comfortable. So they each bring like a different representation to the LGBTQ community. And the fandom response has been so overwhelming for your characters. So I just wanted to talk with you about the response to the fandom, to these characters, because it's honestly a lot what I see on social media and Twitter is about these characters. So Irana, I want to begin with you. Talk to me about the fandom response. We sort of came into making the first season. We didn't know how it was going to, how, the, what the response was going to be like. And we just knew that we felt really passionately about these characters and these stories and wanted to bring as much truth to it as we could. And then seeing the response was like, you know, even if only one person were to resonate with with the stories that we were telling that would have been a dream come true but then it's been so overwhelming and and so lovely and I mean like the dream as an actor and as a creator is just to make people feel seen and heard and I yeah so it's like more than anything we could have wanted really oh I mean yeah it has just been such an honor to I mean it's such an honor to play a queer person and then after that, it's the, when the show came out, it, the biggest honor was being able to have these open conversations and dialogues with people from the queer community and have these yeah, open conversations about people's experiences and to hear from people that they feel like they're weird or that they're alone in any of this. I think that is so important. And I was saying earlier today, I was saying, you know, my one thing, like if I can, if I know that this show or this work has made anyone feel like, they're not alone, then I feel like I can like sleep at night. And I think that's something that, you know, I, th everyone deserves to feel um, seen. Everyone deserves to feel respected and like honored. And I'm really happy that we've, we've been given the opportunity to make people feel that way. And I just feel so lucky and grateful to be here for the ride. I love that. Well, like I said, I've seen all of season two. I don't want you guys to get into too many spoilers, but I love that you guys have a real life friendship too. And I'm honestly curious when actors have a real life friendship, does any of that kind of bleed naturally on screen? Like, are there any moments that your real life friendship kind of shows up on screen? Any scenes this season? Yes, I think all the time. Like, it all <laughs> You know, I swear it's like there's like Samir and Eric sprinkled in there like um this episode, um Dot's birthday like we were just like like the mo like montage sort of stuff it was just basically me and Erin are just running amok holding hands <laughs> like it's like just classic behavior I, I remember that. we came off the set once and we were talking and I was like oh my god am I doing enough work like I feel like I'm not putting in the work as an actor like oh I'm being lazy and then we're like well, no, because just like us having the relationship that we do, yeah, kind of, like doing so much of the work for us because it's like the, we don't have to focus on connecting because I'm like, yeah. Uh, you're already there. Well, they're wrapping yeah. me. I could honestly talk to you ladies all day. I love watching the two of you on screen and I cannot wait to see the fan response, especially with some scenes this season. And I'm already mm. waiting for season three. So I'm hoping that <laughs> happens soon. <laughs> oh, thank you. It was so nice to talk with you. Nice to chat with you too. Congratulations to you both. Thank you thank so you. much. Bye. Rain and Sarah, congratulations to you on season two. I'm actually a new fan to this series. I binged seasons one and two back to back. So I've spent a lot of time with these characters over the last couple of days. But congratulations to you ladies, first of all, because I love these characters so much. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, now that you've stepped into the roles of Leah and Rachel for two seasons, how do you personally feel that you relate to each of your characters or something that maybe the character has taught you now that you've stepped into it for both seasons? Sarah, I want to begin with you. What's something that you feel that you can really feel like you relate to with Leah? Um, 
I think Leah is, is definitely an overthinker and I don't think I really had that quality when I was in her age, but as I've gotten older, I've definitely, um, I think picked apart things in a way that Leah does um, and revisits them quite a bit. Um, she ruminates and I can confidently say I, I ruminate a lot um, and think about things that happened many moons ago um, and sort of piece them together in my head in maybe a different light than, than they were originally cast in, which I think is, you know, her, her greatest weakness and her, her greatest strength. Um, so I think, I think bringing that awareness of, of how she, she thinks to my own, own life has been something that I've learned. Yeah, no, I love that. Rain, what do you feel like you've learned from Rachel? Because it's been like incredible to watch her journey, especially with her hand getting chopped off in season yeah. one. <laughs> so, I mean, we've been through a journey with Rachel. What, what's something that you have learned from playing her for two seasons now? Um, I think she's just made me really aware as to how I can kind of just avoid you know feelings and because you don't necessarily like to go into feelings all the time um but that can cause you to erupt with feelings when you suppress them for so long so I think um Rachel's definitely caused me to be more self-aware about how I go about when I encounter different things that might not necessarily make me feel great um but just working on being like it's okay to not feel great but you got to get work on getting through it you can't just avoid it yeah no no I love that I definitely agree um these roles are obviously super physical you're running through the jungle you're getting splashed in the ocean like you guys are doing so many things I honestly feel for you while you're filming and in Australia sometimes mm -hmm. um but what is like you know one survival skill that you will take with you like for life that you maybe learned while filming Sarah I want to begin with you we did, it was during season one, um, we had some practice with a, uh, a, a long hold breath holder. I think I'm getting that. I'm not, that's not actually her title, but she free can diver. Free diver. Free diver. Free diver. She free could diver. hold her breath for like seven minutes and 45 seconds. And she taught us essentially how to hold our breath. And she said, it takes a lot of meditation because when your mind is racing, it uses energy and therefore it uses oxygen. Um, and I think I, I, I've like spurted out that fun fact at a party or two since then. I just think it's so mm -hmm. interesting, like the idea that if you calm your, calm your mind, then you can have more breath, breath capacity. Um, so I guess if I was ever in a survival situation, like I really would try to tell myself to breathe because um, breathing always helps. Um, well, first I learned that Sarah's a fish in water. She actually is <laughs> like, she was queen of the water. I play the diver, but she was like the actual diver. Oh, um, that but, is funny, actually. <laughs> yeah, she was amazing at it. Um, but I'd say what I've learned in terms of surviving on an island, um, I, geez, it's, I think, yeah, you do learn skills about controlling mind over matter. I think that definitely was something that, um, I took with me to try and be like, oh, your mind can play. I think that's what I learned a lot. Your mind can actually play serious tricks on you because in training that did happen. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Congratulations again to you ladies. I cannot wait for fans to see the new season. We're left with a cliffhanger in season two. So I'm already ready for season three. So hopefully we can make that happen soon. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, ladies. Bye-bye. Sophia, Shannon, and Jenna, congratulations to you on season two. I literally watched season one and season two back to back, and I always have so much fun <laughs> with you ladies with these characters. So I'm so excited to be chatting with you today. So first of all, congratulations on the success Thank of you. season one and season two. Thank you Thank very you. much. You're welcome. Welcome. You're welcome. So I love all of these characters. I honestly feel like I see a little bit of myself in each of them. And I love how different they all are and how they're learning from each other, like going through this difficult journey. But now that you've stepped into the shoes of these characters for two seasons, how do you feel that you most relate to your characters? So Sophia, how do you feel that you most relate to Fatten? And what is something that you learned about yourself while playing this character? Um, 
I learned that there's a lot of me that I um, felt shame about, um, you know, uh, I've always thought of myself as, you know, a pretty confident person. Um, I mean, I'm not confident, but just like, not really gave, given it thought. Like I didn't think that I, I was embarrassed of aspects of myself. I was very unaware. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, fat and, you know, that's what I thought I related to her about the most is like her strength and her, her how she's so sure of herself. And um, I think even in my mind, I, I kind of shamed women like that in, um, like subconsciously, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because I, I I didn't really understand like why they would uh, prioritize their appearance so much. Um, but I think that I absolutely understand, you know, it's actually crazy because we're the same, Fatten and I really, we are. I just like was always lying to myself, uh, mm -hmm. basically my whole life and probably now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I actually really love that answer. Shannon, how do, you, how do you feel that you relate to Dot? Because I love how she's so blunt about things. She is blunt and we love her for it. I don't think I'm that, I'm not, I'm definitely not as blunt in real life. Um, I relate to Dot in the fact that she had to grow up really fast. Um, I moved out of home at 17 uh, across the country and I relate to her in the fact that found family is one of the most important things. Um, and the support network that I had to build and to get to that place was a struggle and it was, and it was difficult. And at times it felt impossible that I would ever get to this place where I would feel supported in my new life alone. And now I've reached it and I couldn't be prouder of myself and Doc couldn't have been prouder of herself to kind of, have people to rely on finally and, and have a support system. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. Jenna, how do you feel that you relate to Martha? I obviously have her animal lover characteristic, <laughs> maybe not to her extreme, but what's how do you feel that you relate to Martha? Because I love watching her on screen and I love her journey this season, even though it's so like emotional. Mm -hmm. For me, it was the fact that and I love this so much about her that she was shamelessly herself, even though it was very strange and very abstract to everyone else's point of views. And she had just no embarrassment for it and anything like she would say, it would sound not anything, but like when we were um, unloading my suitcase, it was, it was strange. Like the things that I was pulling out, I had hedgehog slippers and, um, a frog towel. It's like, it's very much kiddish and, <laughs> But with that, though, um, no one else really knows, like, what's really perpetuating that. And I think for me to relate to that would be, like, it almost is myself in that element where I feel like um, I am comfortable being who I am, but, like, there's also things behind that as well. So I feel like that's one of the strongest and closest connections I have with Martha. Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate you ladies so much. Thank you for your answers and your time today. And I literally cannot wait for the fans to see season two. I'm already waiting for season three because that cliffhanger, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank so you much. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Amy and Sarah, congratulations on DC. this. DC, whoop, whoop, sorry. Yes, DC, uh, DC and Baltimore <laughs> area, yes. Um, so congratulations to you on this series. I have to admit that I'm a new fan of this series. I literally just watched seasons one and two back to back, had so much fun with these characters. Um, so congratulations to you, first of all, because I first found out about this show on social media when I saw a lot of viewers tweeting about their love of Tony and Shelby, who I really, really enjoy watching the show. So I wanted to get your opinion after the success of season one. Um, obviously, the fans love what they've kind of nicknamed now, you know, like Shoney. What was your reaction to seeing them as a couple and getting the fan reaction to seeing them together and them being so excited about it? Amy, I'll begin with you. I, you know, we when we were talking in season one about how to build um, 
the season. You know, uh, Sarah had a very strong idea about Shelby as somebody who was struggling to find her identity. And the more we talked about Tony as obviously being a lesbian was part of her identity, but wasn't sort of the story we told of her backstory. Um, we just started talking about like, th these two like right away are kind of clashing. And if one of them is afraid of who she is, that could be why they're clashing. Um, it just sort of really naturally evolved as like the, as the most sort of clear, honest, authentic story to tell. Um, and a very beautiful story to tell. And I think um, I'm floored by how much people responded to it um, and thrilled because obviously you really want uh, people to believe in the relationships you build and people have really invested in it. Yes, Sarah, what about for you? Because I love an enemies to lovers relationship <laughs> and that story. So I just wanted to get your opinion on what the what just like seeing the fan experience after season one with these characters. Yeah, I, it's, it's so heartening. It's so rewarding. And um, yeah, I'm, I have to keep such a global mind about all of the characters, oh, yeah. um, you know, and, and Leah is a bit of an avatar for myself for a while. And, um, you know, uh, I care very deeply about the sisterly relationship of Nora and Rachel. Rachel it, and Nora, yeah. Um, so sometimes I'm like, oh yes, I really deeply care about, um, you know, Shelby and Tony, and, um, but I, I have all of these other plates swirling. Um, and then you see the fandom like throw their arms around this couple and you're, you're just so grateful, um, you know, that, uh, that that response is there, um, and and for what it's worth, it does give me pause in the writing of season two. I'm like, look, the, there's no there's no mistaking it. They have to be cared for. They have to you know have rich storylines. Shelby and Tony need to you know be honored um, uh, in their relationship, and so and we we're very mindful of their storytelling. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, they are wrapping me in a bit. Amy, I'm a huge fan of Sex and the City and the comeback. Oh, have to oh, mention, thank you. Have to mention that, but I want to know, how would Valerie Cherish and Carrie Bradshaw do <laughs> among the ladies in the wild? What do you think their reaction oh. would be? What do you think their number one thing would be to bring with them okay. if they had one thing? <laughs> well, Valerie would bring Mickey. <laughs> yes, she would. <laughs> she would be like, if I'm going to be stranded on an island, it's Mickey. Uh, he's coming with me. Um, and I think she would be losing it. Um, and uh, I think Carrie would bring her computer because she'd want to be writing about the experience she was having. And, uh, and I think she would be, even though she loves the Manolo and a good outfit, I think she would be creating sarongs out of like uh, fig leaves by the end. So I think she'd do all right. <laughs> oh my god well I love it I'm so excited for season three no spoilers but the ending of season two how am I gonna wait another year ladies <laughs> congratulations <excited>. yes yes <laughs> congratulations again to the both of you and I cannot wait for fans to see this new season thank you again for your time thank, thank you Lauren thank you bye bye